In this problem, we're asked to write a function rule for g of x and h of x based upon f of x using what we've learned about function transformations. So here's a table for f of x, table for g of x, and table for h of x. Let's first compare the table of values for f of x and g of x. Before we look at the graph, what we should notice is for the same x values, the function values for f of x and g of x are different. Notice all the function values for g of x are one more than the function values for f of x. And since the function values or y values for g of x are one unit larger than f of x, we should expect these points to be one unit higher on the graph. So the green points represent f of x and the blue points represent g of x. And notice how each blue point is one unit higher than the green point. And because we have a vertical shift up, this is going to affect the value of d. Again, function g is one unit higher, so we can say g of x must equal f of x plus one. And let's go ahead and test this using a value of x. So for example, if we select x equals two, this is saying that g of two must equal f of two plus one. Well, g of two is six, f of two is five, but five plus one is six, so it checks. Now we'll compare the table of f of x to the table of h of x. And again, before we look at the graph, what we should notice here is that for the same function values, now the inputs or x values are different. Notice how for the same outputs, the x values for h are one larger than the inputs for f for the same output. For example, when the output is five, the input for h is three, and the input for f is two. So if all the x values or inputs are one unit larger than the inputs for f, h of x should be shifted one unit to the right of f of x. If we take a look at the graph, again, the green points represent f of x, and the blue points represent h of x this time. Notice how the blue points are shifted one unit right from the green points. which means for our function rule, this is going to affect the value of c. But remember, the sine of c is the opposite of what you might think. Because it shifted right one unit, that means c is going to be negative one, which means our function rule is going to be h of x equals f of the quantity x minus one. And again, let's go ahead and test this. Let's select h of two. Well, h of two must be equal to f of two minus one is one. Notice h of two is three, and f of one is equal to three as well. So this rule checks also. So whenever we're in doubt, I would suggest plotting the points to see what type of transformation has occurred. I hope you found this helpful.